today we'll be discussing about uh, welded connections the second part of it uh, we had discussed about welded weld subjected to direct tension that shear now today we'll be talking about weld subjected to eccentric shear uh, and as well as eccentric tension okay so what do we mean by eccentric shear and eccentric tension i'm just refreshing you know you all know that so when you say there is an eccentric shear it means it means that uh, your force the forces acting to the connection does not uh, pass through the centroid of the world centroid of the connection so if you, you can see that that uh, you have a welded connection in this form in this shape and centroid lies over here so you can see that there are two forces acting onto the connection we have a px and a py px is located uh, at a distance of ex at an eccentricity of ex from the centroid and py i mean sorry px is located by a, an eccentricity of ey and py is located at an eccentricity of ex from the centroid now what we do here as we know is to transfer the py to the centroid making it a direct shear so this py is transferred onto uh this uh, onto a line such that it passes through the centroid as well as px is transferred in a similar way and we have a moment a resulting moment which is equal to p is equal to m is equal to px ey plus py ex okay so therefore as a result of these you get some stresses and these stresses are partly from direct shear and partly from eccentric shear from direct shear you have rx prime which is px over ly and you have ry prime which is py over l i mean lw i mean not, not ly it's lw that is the length of the weld okay and the eccentric shear the stresses due to eccentric eccentric shear is calculated from my over ip for rx double prime and my over ip mx over ip for ry double prime so this ip is a polar moment of inertia this moment you know from before we calculated y is the location that is the location of the weld that you need because the, the, these are uniform stresses they act equally at every part of the weld suppose this is a weld this rx and ry they act uniformly in the entire region as you will see from the next slide but the eccentric shear will really depend upon suppose this is a centroid it's going to depend upon how far it is away from this from the centroid okay so that is where the value of py and uh, the value of x and y is important now this ip or the polar moment of inertia Uh, can be calculated from a table which is available in the textbook it is not available in the manual but it is available in the textbook uh, it is page it's on page 237 of table 15.18 where you can see I'll just zoom it in you have for example if we are talking about a weld like this you ha you have uh, the x x Uh, the centroid can be easily calculated because it's going to be at the center it's easy uh, because it's a symmetric section so the centroid will be at uh, exactly at this b at d by 2 and d by 2 and the uh, the section modulus is required later on we'll see and is given to you and an ip the polar moment of inertia can be estimated from this equation provided you have uh, the dimensions of the weld now if you're talking about some weld like this for example this is uh not symmetric so you have to calculate x bar and y bar from this equation the section modulus can be calculated from this equation and ip can be calculated from this equation okay now this is what i was talking about 
due to direct shear you look at any point throughout the weld you have an rx prime and an ry prime okay that is uniform throughout the entire uh, weld but in the case of eccentric shear you see that this moment uh, acts uh, at a distance of say this is x bar this is y bar or or, or this is in this case it is the well, if it is x bar and y bar this uh, the the value of stress of rx prime and ry prime at this location is different from this location so you will have to find the critical point uh, of the weld which is going to be your uh, your designing factor the stress the point of the weld which has the highest uh, ultimate stress which is calculated based on these numbers we'll see how it is calculated in the next step. now once you have uh, like once you have figured a point which carries the maximum stress for example in this case you can be pretty sure if if that this is going to be the uh, the critical point because this get closer but as as the farther it is farther it is from the centroid the higher will be the stress so uh, so you have in the x direction you have rx double prime plus rx prime and then in the y direction you have ry prime and ry double prime so essentially what you're doing is you're finding the root of squares right that is in the y axis you have ry prime plus ry double prime and in the x axis you have rx prime plus rx double prime so your ultimate is so your ultimate is going to be this is ultimate is going to be in this direction so this is going to be r u v okay that is calculated basically from pythagoras theorem and this the design criteria is that this should be less than the capacity of the weld okay now the capacity of the weld you know is calculated from this equation it is phi r and w is equal to 0.75 fnw times area of the weld but in this case we calculate all of these for unit length we use unit length so the lw value is taken as one this was actually area of the weld but here we take the length as one so you, you are only left with the effective throat which is 0.707a and fnw is calculated from this equation you know that but the only thing that you need to uh, be careful here is the value of theta okay now let me tell you why uh, it is important you see uh, in this case uh, 0.6 uh, fex is the strength of the weld this theta is important because you see in this figure you have uh, the ultimate when you add them up you have this point which is most critical and you have rx prime plus rx double prime and in this direction you have ry prime plus ry double prime and the resultant is going to be ruv and you know that the by definition theta is the angle between angle between the force angle between the force and the orientation of the weld okay now in this case this point is part of the weld which is acting in this direction i mean the orientation of the weld is like this and the resultant is acting somewhere in this point so the value of theta is calculated from what theta is tan inverse of 
what is it this this uh, uh, this is the theta it will be tan inverse of r y prime plus r y double prime plus r x tan inverse of r y plus r y double prime divided by r x prime plus r x double prime okay now suppose i'll tell you why this is important suppose the critical now in this case it's okay you know that the critical point is over here and the orientation of the weld is like this and the orientation of the force is in this manner so you have this theta over here now suppose that your critical point say for example is somewhere over here okay and your resultant is somewhere over here so the angle would become theta so so this would then be the angle because the orientation of this uh, of this point uh, is which is a part of this weld is in this direction and the ultimate uh, say ruv is here so the theta would be this one so this is the important thing that i was telling up talking about because the theta depends upon uh, the critical point where it is lying I hope the idea is clear. Now, and we take and we take the, the 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 smaller angle between the the, the force and the uh, line of application of uh, weld. See uh, here, yeah, smaller angle will give you the highest higher stress. Okay. Yeah, because you're using sine. No, no. So, yeah, one plus sine raised to power. Yeah, the smaller va value will give you the lesser capacity, which will be more critical. True. Yeah. So, so going ahead, this is what we just discussed, and then we have weld subjected to eccentric shear. Uh, and tension okay eccentric shear and tension so you can see that you have an eccentric shear acting at the point e x away from the centroid this is like a, a w shape attached onto the flange of a i mean w t this is a w t attached onto a, a w shape on its flange and this p the the shear acts eccentrically by uh, an eccentricity of e x away from the centroid, and the tension acts at e y from the centroid. So you know you know the drill. You transfer this p y to the centroid. This p x is transferred to the centroid, and you have a moment m. You have a moment m, which is equal to what? It is equal to P y, uh, P x e y and P e x plus P y e x. So you get the moment. So the ultimate, uh, the uh, direct stresses would be R x prime is equal to P x over L w and R y prime, which is P y over L w. The eccentric shear is calculated from M y over I. I over Y is uh, S. So you'll see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have to take the value of S from the table, which we'll be discussing while doing the problem. And then, uh, based on the values that you got, now you do not have a shear, you do not have uh, an eccentric shear in the Y direction. So that is why we have only R Y prime here. We don't have R Y double prime. We don't have uh, a, a torsion in the Y. Uh, we don't have a shear acting in the Y direction. So, so we have. Uh, so this is what we calculated, uh, and then we have. This is similar to the previous discussion that we had. Now in this case. The value of theta is important because you have uh, a value. I'm sorry, this theta is going to be here. I made a mistake because your weld is oriented vertically. 
and your force is in this direction and when you take the resultant you can think like r u v and your theta is going to be right over here okay so be clear when you do the problem so let's move into uh, the first problem So here, in this problem, determine the weld size for the bracket shown. Now, we need to start off with something. For example, to calculate the value of eccentricity, to calculate the value of uh, uh, IP, we need to know some properties of the weld. We need to uh, assume something. Okay. So in this in this problem. We have assumed the length of the weld because it is after we get the length of the weld, we get the cross section of the weld. We can estimate the. Uh, it is only then we can estimate the uh, the centroid, the value of uh, polar moment of inertia. So in the problem, you have been given the cross section, the the dimensions of the weld. Okay, but you don't have the area of the weld. So in this problem, the weld size or a is the uh, unknown okay so you have a plate attached on to uh, probably uh, a, a flange of a web a flange of a, a w shape and that plate is acted upon by two forces both are uh, uh, causing eccentric shear you have one in y direction and one in x direction and uh, the plate thickness is given to you this is half inch so the first thing that you do is to estimate the properties of the weld. Now you know the value of y bar. The value of y bar is just half of it because it's symmetric about uh, the x-axis. It's only unsymmetric about the y-axis. So you get the value of x bar from the manual, from the table, not from the manual, but from the table in the textbook as b square divided by 2b plus d. Now, when you estimate those values, you get the value of x bar as 1.8 inch. Once you get the uh, value of uh, x bar, you can calculate the value of moments because you require the value of, uh, uh, of, of this distance to get the value of eccentricity, to get the moment. So the polar moment of inertia is again available in the same table substitute the value of b and d you get the value of ip now you need to calculate you know remember the final equation that we need is r u v i'm sorry is r is r i'm sorry There's something something my screen so what you need is ruv which is calculated from square root of r x plus rx prime plus rx double prime the whole square plus ry prime plus ry double prime the whole square so so uh, the direct shear these both are the direct shears that you require so the direct shear is calculated from this r u r e uh, ry prime and rx prime so the total shear in the y direction is can be calculated from here it is 22.8 and the total length of the weld is 20 inches 20 inches is calculated from 6 plus 8 plus 6 which equals 20 so that's what that is the length of the weld so you get the value of ry prime which is 1.14 per inch and rx prime which is 50 divided by 
length of the weld which is 20 and you get a value of 2.5 kip per inch now we need to calculate the indirect shear or the eccentric shear to calculate eccentric shear uh, you need to know you need to calculate rx double prime and ry double prime rx double prime calculated from my over ip we calculate ip already we know the value we can calculate the value of m uh, m is calculated by what two uh, from this figure after we calculate 22.8 times 4.2 plus 8 so that will give you part of the moment and the other part is 50 times 4 inches so so you get the value of m as 7 478 kip inch so that can be used here okay so now from the figure you have to figure out the point and find the point which has the accent which is going to be the most critical point now that is very evident from here because these both points are closer compared to these both points so this point is located at an eccentricity at a, at a distance of x is equal to uh, 4.2 and y is equal to 4 so those values can be substituted to find uh, the values of our x double prime and our y double prime so this can be substituted directly this is m y over ip and this is m x over ip you can substitute these values you get the value of r x double prime and r y double prime since you have calculated everything required to calculate the ultimate shear you can just plug in the values you get the value of r u v as 11.43 kip per inch okay which is less than Uh, phi R and W. Now, phi R and W uh, is the design criteria. So phi R and W is calculated. Now this is where this is based on. It is based on this criteria that then we would calculate the value of the the unknown, which is the size of the weld. Now phi R and W is known to you. It is uh, the nominal capacity of the weld. Now, phi is 0.75, FNW is calculated from 0.6 FEXX. You know the value of FEXX in this problem, it is E70 uh, weld and 1 plus 0.5 sine to the power 1.5 times theta. Length of the weld is taken as 1. Okay. And the effective load. Now, it is, the unknown is in this term. So, here we'll have to calculate the value of. Uh, Dr. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, I thought yeah. you missed it. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this theta is calculated from this uh, thing that we just discussed because the unknown, I mean, the critical point is over here. So now the angle between this R U V and this weld is theta. Now that theta can be calculated from tan inverse of, you can just fill it out. Tan inverse of this will be in the numerator and this will be in the denominator. You get the value of 41.3 degrees. Substitute all the values, you get 28.24 A. Now equate, now equate it to um, the ultimate shear the applied shear ultimate shear uh, and then you can approximate the value of a now once you have found the value of a when you round it to the nearest 16th of an inch you get 7 over 16 so you have a limitation according to the manual you have to make sure that it is within the uh, it is within the limit so the a minimum is based on the uh, thing is uh, thickness of the plate and a maximum is calculated from here uh, this is something that we discussed earlier. so you can see that 
this A that we got is, in, in fact, it is slightly less than the maximum, but you have rounded it to the maximum value. So this is uh, the design. So now you have calculated the value of uh, uh, A, which is the unknown. So we have one more problem. Now this problem we'll be discussing about the second part, which is which is uh, when the connection subject. Sorry, we don't check the rupture and uh, we don't check the rupture any base metal. Yeah, you, you need to check. I did not mention it here, but whenever there is a shear acting, you need to check. Uh, OK. But Dr. Yeah, because what's whenever the there is a shear, shear yielding a rupture. You, you mean the concept or in this case? I mean, uh, how it affects the, the section or uh, where it's a cure. You mean in this problem, or you need a you need a general view? In general, in general. Oh, in general, uh, the thing is, sometimes the weld, uh, if the weld, if the strength of the weld is much higher than the shear strength of the of the base material, you are in trouble because according to your calculation, you made the calculations. Keeping in mind the strength of the weld, you have decided you have designed it based on the strength of the weld. Now, if the base material material yields because of shear before the weld, your design is wrong. Do you understand? It should always be such that the weld should fail, or else your weld will not control. The shear of the uh, base material is going to control. The base material is the the electrode or the the section. No, it is the it is the sections, the two plates, for example. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. I, I'll just draw a figure here. Suppose you have like two plates over here, and you have put a weld over here. Suppose I say that this. Uh, the grade of the steel is very low. It can happen that it can just shear away in this region. The weld will be intact. The weld will not fail, but the material might fail. So that is checked based on the two uh, checks that we have. That is base metal yielding and base metal rupture. OK. So now we have, uh, sorry. OK, I said OK. OK, OK. So now we have a welded connection which is subjected to shear and tension. OK, eccentric shear and tension. So I've written S shear here. It's, it's S. S H E A R shear. Okay, so you have in this figure, you have a W T attached, welded onto uh, the, uh, the the flange of a W shape, and you have an eccentric shear of 65 acting at uh, an eccentricity of 9 inch, and then you have a tension which is eccentric in nature, acting uh say this is 14 so it's going to be seven inches away from the centroid you need to determine the size of the weld because the length of the weld is given to you the the configuration of the weld is given to you what we need to calculate is just the value of a okay so the drill is the same you have to transfer uh, the indirect shear and tension onto you have to make it a direct shear accompanied by uh, moment. 
which is calculated from uh, from the force and the eccentricity. So the direct shear uh, is going to be you have calculation of direct shear. You have R U R U Y and R I'm sorry R V Y and R V X. Now you can see that in this case you only have shear acting in the y direction acting in the y direction so you don't have I'm sorry, you don't have r x prime because there's no shear in the x axis you have only shear acting in the y axis so you have r y prime which is equal to 65 which is the shear acting divided by the length of the weld which is 2.32 kip per inch and this is zero because you don't have a shear in the x-axis okay and then you have direct tension which is calculated which is basically the total tension divided by the total length of the weld the tension is 70 it is acted on a total wealth of 2 times 14 so you get a value of 2.5 kip per inch so indirect shear is calculated from mc over y mc over i i over c is the section modulus you know that i over y you know when i say c it is the, the highest location which is over here now this uh, i over y is the section modulus now the value of moment now let's find out the values the value of moment is essentially uh, px times ey plus py times ex you plug in the values you get the value of the moment as 1075 kip inch now from the textbook or the chart we just discussed earlier for this type of weld that is Two welds like this you can calculate the value of section modulus as d square by 3 okay where d is the depth and this d can be calculated as as follows and then you are in a position to calculate rt double prime now you can plug in the values uh, uh, that we just found out into this equation okay so you have r vu and then you have the tension values uh, that we just found earlier rt prime and rt double prime you get the ultimate shear ruv now once you have found the ultimate shear you can also find the value of theta because theta is required because you're going to equate it to this should be uh, less than or equal to phi i mean this load should be less than or equal to phi r and w oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this should be less than or equal to the capacity uh, I'm sorry. should be less than or equal to the capacity phi r and w uh, so for that you can value of theta now theta is calculated from here because you see the weld is oriented in this direction and the resultant is in this direction so this is going to be the value of theta theta is uh, tan in, uh, tan theta is rt prime plus rt double prime which is this divided by uh, ruv so you get the value of theta as 83.02 once you have found these values, you can easily find the value of phi R and W, which is just plugging into this equation where A is the unknown and length of the weld is taken as one. Equate it, you get the value of A. A required is 0.57 when you round it on or round it to the nearest sixteenth of an inch, you get A is equal to 9 over 16. Now you can check the value of A minimum and A maximum. Again, this is close. To the a maximum because it is because we already 
it is equal to the a maximum value hence it is okay now base metal shear yielding and rupture need not be checked because this is a combination of shear as well as uh, tension so you you don't you don't need to calculate it unless it is asked i don't think it's required because uh, it is not required because the shear is also composed because it, it is uh, in combination with tension so you don't need to calculate the base metal shear and rupture so this is the end of the lecture do you have any question